Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to talk about how you can record with your QuickTime Media Player right here in order to get all of the sounds on your computer. And for some of you out there, you might not realize that on the Mac, the QuickTime Media Player isn't just a playback device for your video files and your sound files. It also lets you record movies where it uses your external capture devices like, say, um, an, a webcam or other microphones and video cameras and iOS devices that can like do limited iOS screen capture if you have Thunderbolt cables. It also lets you do audio recordings for like podcasting with your friends and screen recordings in the event that you want to do tutorials like your pal Larry here. Now, the downside of this is, if you want to do any type of screen recording on your Mac, it doesn't capture your desktop audio. So if you're trying to do like an audio tutorial, people won't be able to hear what you're talking about and all of that stuff. So there's, you got to find a way to add in your own functionality with secondary tools, and that's what we'll be covering inside of this tutorial. But just to show you what it does, when you click on New Screen Recording, it opens up a little box here with a little recording button. It lets you select your whatever microphone you want to use, but unfortunately, it doesn't really let you select a desktop device, which is kind of poopy. And then you can also tell it to record mouse clicks while you are recording, which is kind of handy if you want to get people's attention, especially when you're like Larry and you have a very small mouse cursor. So when I turn that on, It'll tell me like some more functionality that you can use it to record just a small section of your screen. But whatever I do here, like if I open up um, my system preferences or my audio MIDI setup, it'll record that. A little laggy though, I actually notice. But it's a little laggy. And then when you just stop it, stop screen recording, then it will replay a sample for you of whatever you did on the screen. And it'll even animate my mouse with a little circle around it as I click on stuff. Personally, I prefer if they let you customize the mouse click animation from different bright, like, alternatives, but it is what it is. I mean, the trouble with a lot of Apple programs like this is they give you some cute little quick functionality to do things like recording, but they never offer you any in-depth settings to kind of do any power user advanced work, which is always kind of lame. So basically, the way that we're going to record audio from the desktop is we're going to use the iShowU audio capture driver, which is created by the iShowU studio folks as a replacement to the Soundflower audio driver, which is what you'll also be using if you want to record stuff with OBS, open broadcasting software, on your computer. So just download this driver, install it. That's all you have to do with the driver itself and then we'll go on to the next step. And you'll find this link in the video description, so don't worry, all that stuff is right there for you. So then, once you've got that installed, open up your audio MIDI setup window here. You can find that under Applications, down here at the bottom, under Utilities. It's basically your advanced audio control panel, or as advanced as you're likely to find on the computer without buying a secondary program. So this will show you, like, me, I've got my Yeti stereo microphone set up as, well, it should be set up as my default sound input. I don't know why it's trying to use my webcam, but my default everything is the Yeti stereo microphone because it's got both an input and an output on it, which is kind of handy because it's right in front of my face. Might as well have it the headphones plugged in there. And what we need to do is we need to go down to this little plus symbol in the lower, like what, left-hand corner. And first we're gonna create an aggregate device. So an aggregate device is going to listen to and record from two separate audio sources. And for this, I'm going to want to record from my Yeti stereo microphone and also the iShowU audio capture device. Since my microphone is the primary um, mic capture device, I don't need to do any audio drift correction, but if you have, it's set to record from a second device. You want to do drift correction just so that 
your audio doesn't get uh, out of sync from where it should be. I don't necessarily understand why the system doesn't just do this automatically if it needs to, but, you know, whatever, it's weird. I don't necessarily claim to be an expert when it comes to audio. Next, we're going to create a multi-output device. So now this is going to do the exact opposite. It's going to take one audio stream and split it into two devices. So this is going to record. So basically what, what I should say is it's going to listen to my desktop audio device sound that's going to my microphone, which is also my output device. And I want it to share that output with the I show you audio capture device so that this device is then feeding a copy of my desktop audio to my microphone. And once that's done, once you've got this stuff set up, then you're going to want to open up your system preferences. You can also go to the little Apple symbol in the upper left hand corner of your screen and go to system preferences. It's a button right here. Inside of here, you want to go to your sound and we'll just start with input. So you can see my audio level right here from my microphone. It's fairly loud because I haven't you know, edited it yet. It'll be edited when you hear it. And I want to select my audio aggregate device for my input. And then I'm going to select my output and I'm going to select the multi output device. Now, here's the kicker with this. Make sure your audio levels are how you want them before you select the multi output device, because it's just copying what the other two devices are set at. Otherwise, it's going to sound weird and your levels are going to be funky. So set your levels, then select the multi output device as your output device. And you should be ready now to start recording. Now, the good way to test this, let me open up one of my recordings. Let's see. Let's go to uh, where is my reencoder folder? I'm brain farting today. So in my recording folder, which I haven't renamed since I played Destiny, let's just pick a random video. Let's pick Doom and let's turn my volume down. Oh, that's right. I can't change my volume. Well, let's open back up system preferences. Let's go to output. Let's see, Yeti stereo microphone. Let's put that down to like here and reselect multi output device. Now let's open up Doom. Actually, let me open that up in VLC media player. And it was. So we'll just select a part where there's like fighting happening and we'll open up the system preferences again. So if you open up your input, when you play a piece of audio, just to test this, you should be able to play the audio and the sound will show up right here in this little preview, like uh, visualizer. I'll just start grabbing stuff, I guess. Who's still alive? You? Well, not anymore. Who's over here? There we are. Okay, so as you can see, the audio is showing up here, which tells me that my output is being copied to my input so that the audio is being shared with my microphone so that it can be recorded by QuickTime Media Player. So that's all I need from this. I'll close that. And now we can select uh, and I'll actually have to replay that now that I think about it. Let's open that back up in VLC. I'll just leave it at the start of my recording. And let's select QuickTime new screen recording. And you can see my levels are displayed right here, which proves that I'm getting the audio samples that I need. And it's recording from the aggregate device, which is what I want. So basically, when you pull down this, this slider, make sure the aggregate device is selected. And then you should be good to go. So we can just click record. And it's going to start recording my entire screen. And we'll just play a preview. It's a little laggy because I am using two screen recorders at the same time. Okay. So let me just pause that if it will pause. All right, I guess we got to force quit you because you're dying. Is exploding everything. I figured this might happen because I'm using two different screen recording softwares right now, and that lags the pants off of this computer when I'm trying to fuck with the audio. So bear with me. So now if we preview this, and we'll just play a preview. It's a little laggy because I am using two screen recorders at the same time. Okay. All right, there you see it. Uh, it works. It's a little laggy when you use a secondary screen recorder, 
but that's how you capture audio so that you can hear audio from your desktop when you use the QuickTime screen recording software. I gotta say though, of all the screen recording softwares that I typically have fiddled with, QuickTime Media Player, back when I first tested it out, it's not the best to use. Like, I would, I would seriously recommend you use OBS or just about any other software, even the premium ones, like I'm using ScreenFlow. Uh, I would recommend using any of those over QuickTime because QuickTime is really clunky and laggy. And if you do anything CPU intensive while you're using it, it might screw up, which is the reason why I never used it for tutorials in the first place. But yeah, that's how you do it. If you need any help with any of that, I will try to assist you. I'm not the most adept at fixing sort of audio problems on the Mac, but I'll give it the old college try. Worst case scenario, I might try to tell you to find like a, a forum somewhere that might give you some more information. Like the Apple forums, uh, the, the Apple support people might not help you, but the other Apple users are pretty advanced and they might be able to give you a hand. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Again, links are in the description for the iShowU capture device or slash driver. It's free. All the, most of this stuff is free unless I specify otherwise. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, ask questions that might lead to future tutorials, which is why this tutorial was created in the first place. And I will catch you guys and gals next time. Toodles, everybody.